Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church, St. Joseph, Michigan, and to our online worship service. We are delighted that you have joined us, and we pray that God would bless you as we glorify him. Also, we'd encourage you to like or share this link so that others may also enjoy the, the word of God which we bring to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard who has kept our soul among the living 
and has not let our feet slip. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the sixth Sunday of Easter is recorded in Acts, the tenth chapter. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all, you yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles, for they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water from baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water 
and the blood, and these three agree. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And we join in confessing our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's the sixth Sunday of Easter, and the sixth week in a row, where one word, one action, 
has been repeated in our readings, either directly or indirectly. Love. In Holy Week and on Easter Sunday, love dies and is resurrected for us. On the second week of Easter, Jesus loves Thomas so much that he would do anything to have Thomas love him back. On the third week, Peter loved his neighbors so much that he preached repentance and salvation to those who put his best friend on a cross. On the fourth week, the good shepherd cared so deeply for his sheep that he willingly died for them. Last week on Easter 5, John the Evangelist told us that God so loved us that we also ought to love one another, and that anyone who does not love does not know God, and that perfect love casts out fear, and again, whoever loves God must also love his brother. And so also on this Sunday, this sixth week of Easter, we hear lovely words from the very mouth of Jesus. There's a lot of love and a lot of abiding, remaining. Today's gospel reading from John is a continuation from last week's gospel reading, the I am the true vine reading. There Jesus tells us two things. One, that we, the branches, have life by only remaining in that true vine. And he gives us that life. He grafts us into that vine. And two, that we, as the branches grafted onto that vine, we bear much fruit and so prove to be his disciples. So when Jesus speaks to us today, he simply says those two things again. Abide in my love and love as I love. In other words, live in him and bear his fruits. Today, Jesus also calls us to be his friends. And that he is such a friend that he'll even lay down his own life to protect ours. And that he's such a good friend to us that now we can't wait to do exactly what he tells us to do. Because that's what friends do, right? They do things to bring each other joy. They love each other. And that's just the fruit that Jesus wants from us. Love, love toward him, and love toward our brothers and our sisters. And although this is an Easter time reading, these words of today's gospel are some of the last words of Jesus as he is sitting and talking to his best friends around the table before he is crucified, killed, and buried. So he is sitting around this table. And this is what Jesus wants his friends to hear. Stick by me and love each other. And it must be in that order, Jesus says. We must first have Jesus, for we can do nothing without him. We are dry, dead branches without the vine. And this vine is the bestest of vines, without comparison, that produces, gives the best of fruits. So freely, forgiveness, life, and salvation. And now that the vine chose you to be a branch, and you are now called to produce that fruit too, and now you must abide. Remain, live in that vine, on that vine. Now you produce what the vine produces, love. These words of Jesus today were meant for his friends. They weren't on a public hillside or the beach 
or inside a synagogue with believers and unbelievers. He was in a room with the ones he trusted most. He shared a meal, washed their feet, his friends' feet. He loved them and just wanted them to love him back. And most, not all, did just that. Most of Jesus' disciples went on to do great things for God and for their neighbor out of love. So today's words for us from the gospel are now for us. No longer for Peter and James and John and Thomas and the others. So where is love in our list of things the church should have or exude? It's impossible to get away from love in scriptures. In the New Testament alone, you can't open a gospel or an epistle without seeing acts of love or hearing exhortations of love. Jesus, the teacher, and his students, Paul, James, Peter, John, all of them echo, speak, love in what they say and in what they do. Do we? Do we abide or remain in the love of Jesus? Lovelessness in the world can hurt. Lovelessness in the church can kill. Allow me to ask another question. Do we have enough fingers to count the number of people we know who have been hurt by an unloving word or action in the church? Can we look around and say, so-and-so isn't in church anymore because one day somebody said something, did something to them? I say that lovelessness in the world can hurt because, well, it can, but we Christians really aren't expecting the world to listen to Jesus. So I say that lovelessness in the church can kill because only in the church, in this body, on this vine, do we have life. There's no life outside the vine. Has lovelessness driven out members from this body? Is lovelessness damaging us? So today we examined ourselves. We said, we have sinned against you in thought, word, deed. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We say it every week. Because we lack love every week. Do we think about what we just admitted to? Do we take it to heart by saying, geez, I really haven't loved my neighbor this week as I should have? Or are these words of confession empty? Our lack of love just might be driving our brothers and sisters out. It might be keeping unbelievers from coming in. So before we think, say, and do, can we ask ourselves, is that loving, gentle, kind? Or am I thinking, saying, doing something out of selfishness, pride, control, as I was writing this sermon, Pastor Roth asked if I had ever seen the posters around the school sometimes that say, before you speak, colon, think, T, is it true, H, is it helpful, 
I, is it inspiring? N, is it necessary? And K, is it kind? Are our thoughts, words, and deeds true to God? Helpful to others? Inspiring, necessary, kind? If not, today Jesus comes to us to steer us back into his path. He points us to himself, but then to others. He tells us that he appointed us that we should go bear fruit, commanding us to do this so that we love one another. So what does that look like? What does love in the church look like? That's not a hard question. I made a short list, and each time that I looked down at the list, I said, there's something missing. So this is the list I have. It looks like feeding, clothing, sheltering, listening, laughing, crying together, supporting, sharing. It looks like confessing, forgiving, welcoming, encouraging. It looks like learning, it looks like singing, it looks like helping, and it looks like growing. And I bet that's not an exhaustive list. So that might be the easy part, to make the list, to identify the things that we can do to love one another. But it requires getting to know one another, and it requires spending time together. And that can be tough. It can be tough for us to have the will to step out of our comfort zones, to give our own time, to give ourselves, to realize that we weren't made for ourselves, but we were made to do the work of God and for our neighbors. So what do we do? We abide, we remain, we live in that love. The love that Christ implanted in us all, much like the fact that we never stop breathing in life, we ought not to stop loving. It's a mode of being, if you'll allow me, it's the church's M.O., Live in love doing the things God puts in front of us to do. The church's work. In love. So when Jesus commands us to live in love, welcome that commandment. Not as a burden, not as a weight, but as the most gospel-centered life that we can live because it orbits Christ and orbits His will and His love. And I really don't want this to be a morality or a go do some good speech. This is the Jesus is the vine and we are the branches speech. It's a Jesus chose us to be His own speech. A Jesus made us his friend's speech. As we just heard in the reading, greater love has no man than this, that someone, Jesus, lay down his life for his friends. It's that sermon about you and I being graciously, freely, lovingly being made Jesus. He died for us. He rose for us. Indeed, he rose. Hallelujah. That vine grafted you into himself. The vine could stand and produce on its own, but it still chose and chooses to attach branches to itself. From his love, Jesus chose you and I to be cemented, cleaved, Bound to him. What a gift. 
that he did not let you or I go. He did not let you or I sink or perish, but chose us to be his own friends. His branches the most beyond the most beautiful of vines to live as those chosen ones. So it's about the Son of God giving Himself to you, giving all of His love, very literally, to you. So that's the love we ought to live in. That love that's been freely gifted to you. So a response to this is a life of pure gratitude and love toward Him and toward one another especially our brothers and sisters. Jesus, thy boundless love to me, no thought can reach, no tongue declare. O oh, knit my thankful heart to thee and reign without a rival there. Thine holy, thine alone I am, be thou my rod and staff and guide. O oh, grant that nothing in my soul may dwell but thy pure love alone. O oh, may thy love possess my whole, my joy, my treasure, and my crown. All coldness from my heart remove. My every act, word, thought, be love. So on the sixth Sunday of Easter, the sixth Sunday in a row where we hear of love, let's meditate our thoughts and our words and our deeds and ask ourselves if we have intensely loved the brotherhood, as St. Peter writes. If we believe that love covers a multitude of sins, if we believe that perfect love casts out fear, as John writes, do we believe all of that by putting others before ourselves in love, just as Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, laid down his life for us, his friends, in love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We worship the Lord also with our offerings, and we thank you for your gifts and your support of the ministry of Trinity, and we pray that God would bless those gifts to the proclamation of his name. Let us pray. Blessed God, you do not reject our prayers or remove your steadfast love from us. Hear us now and answer us in your love for your whole church and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you invite us to freely come and hear your word. Bless and increase faith that we might rightly fear you and learn what you have done for our souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son, in his incarnation, took on our human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. He submitted to his mother, honoring and obeying her, so fulfilling the commandment where we have not. On this Mother's Day, graciously accept our thanksgiving for our mothers, whom you have given to us. Teach us to honor them aright, loving, obeying, and giving thanks for them, as is fitting in your sight. Strengthen all women with child and give them safe delivery. Comfort all women who long to have children but cannot, that they may find their consolation in you and your unfailing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you rule this world by your established authorities in ways that we do not always understand. Yet in the name of Jesus, we may ask you anything freely as friends and sons. Bless our nation's leaders, 
and cause them to serve wisely for our good. Give earthly peace and justice that is in accord with your commandments and the order you have revealed. Bring an end to injustice, violence, and disdain for your truth, and let us receive all good with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, the giver of all that is good, grant your healing and support to all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially those who weigh heavy on our hearts. Give them also the gift of your grace to accept and bear their crosses with faith in you, that finally they would be prepared to depart this life and receive the gift of eternal life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.